Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Professor Collins. My colleagues and I have been working without rest to bring you this presentation of our project, Sim Mars, you are about to view. But before I introduce my colleagues to you, I would like to tell you what we are all about. There are four positions taken up by my colleagues and I, and each is very important. I myself would be the project manager. My job is to fill any gaps, put the final touches on anything and on everything, and even go local to our library for extra research. Our Mars specialist will be showing us what the conditions on Mars are today. Our ecologist, um, what we need on Mars <coughs> to survive, and our telephone technologist will be showing everybody here today how to terraform Mars and how to make it suitable for mankind. And <coughs> as I introduce them to you, they will each give you a little more information about what their job is and a short presentation of their own. And now I'd like to introduce to you our Mars specialist, Professor Snyder. Hello, my name is Professor Snyder. I am the Mars specialist of the Sun Mars Terraforming Team. My job is to gather all the information that I can about Mars for my team. Now that you know what my job is, let's launch into the first slide. Mars is there very different from us. Mars has two moons called Phobos, which means fear, and Deimos, which means terror. Mars has distinctive red sand and is very rocky. Mars's summers have huge dust storms. These dust storms can sometimes cover the whole planet in a silty red storm of blowing dust. These storms can sometimes last <coughs> up to a year long. During winter, Mars has freezing ice clouds that cover the whole planet and they can blow freezing ice all over the planet. Mars is smaller than Earth, so it has less gravity. I took an average on how less weights weigh on Mars than on Earth. They weigh about half as much as they did on Mars as they did on Earth. Mars also has a thinner atmosphere, so it is not as warm, because when the sun's rays enter Mars's atmosphere, they can go right back out, because the atmosphere is too thin to hold them in. Mars also has more asteroid impacts because of the thinner atmosphere. One asteroid hit Mars and sent a piece of Mars flying. It hit Antarctica. Scientists believe that the holes found in the piece of Mars were from life that was on Mars. <coughs> Mars has many notable land features, such as Olympus Mons, the world, the largest known volcano. <coughs> Nobody knows if this volcano is still active. Mars also has polar ice caps on the north and south poles of the planet. These polar ice caps are the only water source on the planet. Mars used to have life, but when the water source was froze and became the polar ice caps, all the life died. Now there is no more life that we know of. Now Dr. Hubbard will give you his report on how we plan to be the next life on Mars. Hello, my name is Dr. Bennett Hubbard. I'm an environmental ecologist of the Sim Mars Project. I tell what organisms we need to live on Mars. We'll need dozens of plants and animals to live on Mars. But we'll also need predatory animals to keep the balance of nature steady. Most of the animals we'll need on Mars are farm animals. We'll need cows for mi milk, food, fur, and fertilizer for our plants. We'll also need we'll also need chickens, goats, ducks, and horses, and other animals. Birds can provide eggs and meat. Fish can provide meat. Since Mars has no water at all on the surface, we can melt most of the polar ice cap. And since it has two percent air, we can bring the <coughs> Since fruit is so has contained contains vitamins, we can bring citrus trees. We also we we'll also bring aspirin and aloe vera for medicine. In a, about a hundred of years or so, Mars and Earth will look very similar. Mars, we hope, will not turn out to be as Earth as polluted as Earth. Mars, since endangered species are dying on Earth because of the pollution. We'll bring we'll bring endangered species to Mars so they can breathe. If they breathe, we'll see less 
endangered species on the endangered species list. We also will make a law on Mars to make it illegal for for you to carry or can or make CFC chemicals since it destroys the ozone in the planet. Now, Dr. David Turner will tell us how to terraform Mars. Hello, I'm the terraform technologist, Dr. Turner. Since it's the terraform technologist's job to tell you all about all the ways that we could use to terraform Mars, I'm also going to tell you about some of the ways that I would use. First of all, we could launch giant drills to Mars. We'd have to attach giant parachutes to the drills so that they would survive the impact on Mars. After landing, the drills would pull in their parachutes so that they wouldn't litter Mars. Then, the drills would drill for important substances underneath the Martian surface, such as ozone, oxygen, or water. We could also launch giant mirrors to the outer space near Mars. The gravitational pull of Mars would stop the mirrors and make them rotate to Mars. The mirrors could be aimed via radio to aim themselves so that the sunlight went on certain places, such as the polar ice caps. That would sublime or melt with no liquid stage in between them. That would put more gases in the atmosphere, which would block out ultraviolet rays, create the greenhouse effect, and make more atmospheric pressure. We would need the same atmosphere on Mars as we do on Earth, so we could take some excess elements down to Earth and ship them to Mars. We could also send probes to asteroids. The probes would search for any important substances <coughs> on the asteroids. If they found any, they would take it out and ship it to Mars. Also, if we were to send animals and humans to Mars, we would have to create artificial gravity on a spacecraft. This is so that the animals and humans wouldn't lose bone and muscle mass. We could achieve this by making a spinning chamber inside the spacecraft that was going to Mars. The spinning chamber would spin at just the right amount so that it equal to Earth's gravity, and as they went to Mars, it would slow down to equal Mars' less gravity. These, I must remind you, are only a few of the things that we could do to transform Mars from a dry, barren and desolate place into a lush, green place, teeming with life. Thank you, Dr. Turner. <laughs> As we all know, there have been many theories and attempts to go terraform Mars, but none of them have quite <coughs> worked. There's always something that causes a problem. Um, we are aware of this and still working on things, but for now, everything has seemed to turn out for the best. Thank you, everyone. Would you like to field some questions? We have a couple of minutes for a little hit. Uh, Dr. Snyder, how do you plan to do... Alright, who's my question? Alright. Uh, how are you planning to stop the uh, sandstorms? Mm -hmm. Oh, I just tell my mom. David could ask answer. When we put more water on Mars, that would dampen the sand and would make the sandstorms less long and less likely. Especially if you mud the sand. Well, it wouldn't go as high because mud is heavier than sand. I didn't think that. Okay. Thank you again. <laughs> Terraform team number three. Good job, you guys. Hey, Emily. Hi.